Stop trying to make it seem like eating well is outside the boundaries for you when I know you're probably spending way more money than normal people when it comes to food, given the fact that you're obese. You're not special. You can't tell me that you're 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 only fat because like social economic issues. I'm thin, you you spend more money than me. That doesn't make any sense. Organic what? Organic what? Hmm? You like buying one inch bananas? I'm buying the BBC bananas. The big ones. The big thick ones that you could swallow down your mouth and you're choking on that shit. Ugh, 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 ugh. That's what I'm eating. Guess what? In my mouth. All day in my, in my mouth. In those moments, I feel myself tempted to say, everything that person said is wrong. Everything that just hurt you is incorrect and you need to put it out of your head because they're wrong and they're just trying to be mean to you. And usually how that comes out for people is saying, you are not fat, but don't listen to it. The message that that sends to that kid, whether we intend to or not, is that if at some point they gain weight, if at some point they become a fat person, even if they aren't now, that they can expect that kind of behavior right it's not a good thing to be fat i don't know why we're lying to children and telling them that it's a good idea to become fat especially at a young age where they're supposed to be like the most malleable they've that you're ever going to be in your entire life it's extremely hard for somebody to break that molding by the way when you're a, when you're a children and then you grow up to become an adult it's very difficult for a children to be fat and having to break that when they become an adult most of the time by the time you're 16 years old most most stuff is set in stone so when i hear people like Aubrey Gordon, who is a beautiful fat activist, who's also a part of the LGBT, whatever. I read their Wikipedia real quick. They have a Wikipedia. Can you believe that? Aubrey has a Wikipedia. Where's my Wikipedia, dude? I need a Wikipedia, okay? I get it. She made a movie, okay? Your fat friend Aubrey or whatever the movie was titled. But still, dude, okay? I feel like I should have a Wikipedia. Somebody work on it, all right? Um, she's doing the white person face. She's doing the... She's doing that phase, dude. Uh, what is going on with this panel of people, dude? What is This has got to be one of the most depressing groups of panels. I get it. You're having a podcast or whatever this is. and a group, oh, oh, they're not even split screen here. I thought they were split screen. This is just two people in the same room. But why isn't anybody questioning anything? I would be asking like, wait, hold on now. I think you're kind of saying, saying some crazy stuff right now. I mean, children are primarily... They're going to be running around, right? They're going to be enjoying life. I mean, this is probably the only point in their life where they're going to actually freely be able to run around and actually explore the world. Wouldn't it be beneficial for a children to have that ability instead of like literally prisoning them in their own bodies? I've seen fat kids before and I've been around fat kids when I was a, when I was a children, right? It's very obvious that these kids can't do shit. They're just sitting there all day on the sidelines while everybody else is enjoying life. And sure, you might be that really depressing kid and you think you're cool because you can draw pictures of stuff, but nobody cares, right? I was drawing pictures of like Goku and people used to think like, oh, why does Goku have nipples? I'm sorry that, you know, like, I'm sorry that Goku has nipples, not in the show, but like the realistic version of Goku would have nipples. Everybody just thought that I was drawing boobs. It's not boobs, it's chest muscles. I'm sorry, I didn't know how to draw it when I was nine years old. I'm sorry, okay? I, I would never, you you know what because of that i turned into a non-artist it was all their fault because they made fun of my goku drawings and that is offensive okay but anyway convincing children that it's it's a good idea to be fat is blasphemous it is actually haram okay that is absolutely atrocious advice and the fact that you're sitting here trying to say these words as if they're not like crazy terrible disgusting words especially in the realm of children i don't know why these people you know, out of all the people to be targeting, right, why are you talking about the children? Why always them? And that that's like an okay way to be. Um, you're out of breath from just talking and you're sitting here thinking that it's a good idea to be, cat be fat? All right, man. I would think instead about talking about, how do you think she was trying to make you feel? How did it make you feel? Do you know, I hear you saying you don't feel pretty, now you feel fat. Do you know pretty fat people? Not really, dude. Not many. Not many pretty fat people out there. I mean, you could probably name one or two, but usually those people that are very, very pretty while fat are usually the idolized versions of those particular characteristics. So, like, you're not seeing people that are pretty and fat simultaneously that have very enlarged faces. You're not seeing people that are pretty and fat. Like, usually... Let's be honest here for a second, okay? Nobody's talking about men. Nobody's talking about men. No, nope, first of all, it's disrespectful to even call a dude pretty in general. Like, if you whipped out your, your Long John Silver and a girl was like, oh my god, that's pretty, you'd be like, what the fuck you just say? My shit has been through wars, okay? I got battle scars, beat off blisters, 
you better recognize the beauty and the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the straight up barbarianness of my largeness. Anyway, but the point I'm making is we're talking about women primarily. When we talk about fat women that are pretty or beautiful, usually they're still following the basic idea of the body of a woman. So like curves and maybe they are holding more weight. Obviously, we're talking about a fat person or an obese person, but usually their weight is distributed in areas where most people would contribute. Most people would sit, sit there and tell you are the preferable areas. So like boobs, butt, um, maybe thighs too, right? Maybe you got some weight on the back. I don't fucking know, right? They're usually those are the people you're talking about. You're not talking about people that are like, holding their weight in their gut. You're not talking about the people that have like no necks. You're talking about people, you're not talking about people that belly buttons are like nine inches deep. Like you're not talking about these people. You're talking about a very particular genre of person. So when I hear these people talk about that and they go, you can be pretty and fat simultaneously. I don't doubt that, but you're talking about a very niche scenario of person that is going to be pretty and fat simultaneously. Most people are not going to achieve that. It's like when somebody tries to tell you that Mm, this is the best way to make money. Invest in crypto. First of all, you're, if you make money in crypto, that means somebody else had to lose money in crypto because money isn't just made from nothing. Okay, there's that. And then also, that's the one of the worst pieces of financial advice, given the fact that what is a chance? How many times have you heard somebody say, I've gotten rich from making money off crypto? Not many people. And if they did, it was like a very small percentage of people. So you're targeting a very niche scenario here to try to justify somebody being fat. And you're saying this to a children who probably doesn't even register what the fuck you're even saying. Do you know, I hear you saying you don't feel pretty, now you feel fat. Do you know pretty fat people? Have you seen some pretty fat people? Yeah, I've seen some. She's pretty fat. Definitely pretty fat. Whew, that bitch over there, way pretty fat. Well, can you be pretty and fat? Can you be smart and fat? <laughs> can you be all of these different things and fat? Do you know Yeah, fat but why would you ever want to be, like, it's great that you're pretty and fat, and you're, you know, I, I obviously a poor choice of words on her end, pretty fat. Yeah, you're pretty fat. Pretty fat. Damn, you're pretty fat. You know what I'm talking about? I remember watching Three Stooges when I was a kid, and he said, "Hey, uh, do I smell good?" And he said, "You smell good, right? Because it's like a it's a poor choice of words. Like you smell and then good right after. Anyway, the same thing could be said here. Pretty fat, yeah. You're pretty fat. You are pretty fat. That's a factual statement. You're not pretty and fat. But when these people say this stuff, right? And like I want to also stress out, like everybody here is smiling. And it's like she's saying something influential. This woman has a, a, a her book in the back, right? I think this is Aubrey's book, dude. How?" How do people just make books nowadays? Like, how, how do you how do you find the time to just write bullshit in a piece of in a in a bunch of papers and then just publish it? Who's publishing this, by the way? And what are these back here? Is this chains? All right, whatever. I'm going off on for no reason. I've I've I've, I've forgotten what the point was. Fat. Can you be smart and fat? Oh yeah, you could be all those things, but why would you ever want to be fat on top of any of that stuff? Like, why is that even a? You know, why is that always an adjective you guys have to throw in? <laughs> Can you be all of these different things and fat? Sure. Do you know fat people that you like? What are they like? Santa Claus, man. That's uh, Santa Claus. He's fat, you know, unless you're talking about that one from that claymation movie, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He was thin in that one. But I like probably Santa Claus, but he's like not real. And he's also black sometimes. So you have that guy. And then, well, even the modern depiction of Santa Claus, I feel like he's not even fat anymore. Like he's just kind of like a thin guy that runs track sometimes. You got him. That's it. Um... <sighs> I mean, I'm sure I could find a whole bunch of people that I like that are fat. Like, I have some fat friends, but I don't look up to these people and go like, yes, they're fat. Therefore, I can achieve because they're fat. Like, what do you, why do you have to, I get it. This is like your message, but it's cringe. It's cringe beyond belief. Isn't it weird to say that that, saying someone is like that person is an insult? That's weird. That person's great. Why wouldn't you want to be like that person? It's kind of weird to say that. That's like somebody saying like, yeah, you know what? You're, 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 you're fucking like Hitler. And you go, well, you know, Hitler had a great mustache, you know, Hitler had a great mustache and he, I, he had that really nice babe, you know, his his wife, huh, she was hot. Um, So you know what? That's great. I love that you compared me to Hitler. I, yes, I, I'm, it's a great compliment. It's a great compliment that you compared me to Hitler. I'm so grateful for it. Nobody's looking at it as a compliment. If you sat there and you said you have Wendy William eyes, nobody's going to look at that as a compliment. Nobody. No, nobody. I don't care. I don't know what you're going to fucking say about that. Same thing if somebody compared you to Hitler. And the same thing if you're saying, Yes, I know it's extreme to compare somebody that's fat to Hitler. I know, but it's an analogy, all right? Dude, it's a hypothetical. In the same say, in the same sense, if somebody is fat and you're going like, oh, but like that person that's fat is like, obviously they have diabetes, high blood pressure. They're literally moving like straight up bricks through their veins. They can't get up out of a seated position and they struggle every single day to get out of bed. Well, it's okay because they're amazing. They're so funny. They're so awesome. They have like a great sense of humor. Why is it a bad thing to be fat? <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it's just like, Let's just really focus on the things that really don't matter in the spectrum of being fat 
and then not even remotely look at any of the defects of being fat. That seems awesome. In the same way that somebody says, like, you, you're you just like Hitler, and you go, oh, he wrote a great book. He was a man of art. Oh, he had a nice mustache. And, like, completely acknowledge, like, the six million Jew part. Talking about why I don't use the term fat phobic. This just came in the mail. I'm so psyched. If you have you know what I love is like when people start reading a book or maybe when they read a piece of literature or media or something like that. Sometimes what people will do is like they'll become that media for like, I don't know, a week, two weeks at most, right? I do it too sometimes where I'm like really, really enveloped into Star Wars or maybe like Yu-Gi-Oh! or like Dragon Ball. Like I'm really into it for like a week or two, right? I'm like, yeah, I fucking love Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ewan McGregor is hot and sexy and dangerous. And his blue lightsaber is probably a reflection of how big his penis actually is. But that I don't usually take like ideologies from people. I usually just adopt like you know, phrases and things such and so forth from, like, the media I'm consuming, like Star Wars or Yu-Gi-Oh! or Dragon... Last time on Dragon Ball Z, right? One of those things. I'm not, like, completely taking somebody as ide somebody's entire ideology. And it's fine if you do. But I just really wish that if you are a person, hear me out, if you're somebody that wants to change the way you think, because of a piece of media or maybe you heard something and saw something new that's awesome that's great i encourage people to change you should not be the same person from year to year to year to year you should be growing and you should be adopting new things that work for you and beneficially hopefully but i really hope that if you are adopting new ideologies and you are adopting new ways of thinking about stuff can you at least find out why because if you just kind of believe something because you heard it somewhere and it sounded really cool that's fine but like if anybody ever challenges you on those things and you have no reason to justify you have no way to justify those claims you're gonna look dumb and i mean maybe you never do get challenged but i wouldn't want to be in a universe where i'm never going to be challenged based off of the things i say that's kind of crazy maybe you're not as based as me but i have a lot of crazy ass statements that i say and people ask me all the time it's better to have the knowledge that's going to back it up rather than just saying things and hopefully nobody ever questions you on it have bought it yet go now run don't even finish this video right yeah don't don't <laughs> buy buy this book from this random fat person that discusses how terrible it is to be fat don't finish my video which is the entire purpose i want you guys here to begin with yeah don't even watch my video what go read this book i think all right yeah yeah totally great totally great for people watching you let's talk about why i don't use the term fat phobic and why instead i use the term anti-fat bias to describe behaviors or ideology like i feel like it'd be better if you just used fat phobic it's a clean word compared to anti-fat bias what the fuck why do you, every time i hear these people changing up terminologies and words it's always a longer word it's always something ex exorbitantly longer dude fat phobic right what is that three syllables anti-fat bias i guess it's still three syllables but even still it's longer it's like why you guys have to make it it's the same shit right it's it's basically the same shit i don't know why it matters but anyway well, let's hear why she doesn't like to use it which i would i would love to know who asked her this question and why instead i use the term anti-fat bias to describe behaviors or ideologies etc that others refer to as fat phobic to do so i'm going to read an excerpt from this book by the beloved Aubrey Gordon. I just wish to hear it in your words. Like, why am I listening to you if I'm if if, if you're just gonna refer to this book? Like, why can't you just say it from your own words, man? I hate when people do that shit. Where they go like, oh yeah, I totally defend this point, but like in in order to like really explain this point, I'm gonna play you a video. What the fuck are you talking about? Why 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 am I not talking to the guy in the video and not you? What are you talking about, man? Should I, should I just hit this guy up on Twitter and see if he's gonna like talk to me? Because you obviously, you, you're saying a lot of good things about this guy. I hate when people do that shit. I don't know why I put myself on full screen, but I'm gonna do it again. Co-host to my favorite podcast, Maintenance Phase, author of What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Fat, another amazing read, and author of You Just Need to Lose Weight and 19 Other Myths About Fat People. So... I wonder how many sales you get from that. Like, what's the percentage split, you think? Like, even if it was, like, 10%, what are you making, like, $10 a day? Or maybe, like, maybe it's probably, like, $10 a... Mm, it would be pretty pretty high if it was $10 a day. Like, how many people do you think are buying that book? Well, don't give me credit for these words. They are not mine. But she articulates it much better than I could. So here we go. Anti-fatness is an umbrella term used to describe the attitudes, behavior, and social systems that specifically marginalize, exclude, underserve, and oppress fat bodies. They refer both to individual bigotry as well as institutional policies designed to marginalize fat people. 
While fat phobia has become a popular term to describe anti-fat beliefs and behaviors, mental health professionals and mad pride activists have been clear. Oppressive behaviors are not the same as phobias. Phobias are real mental illnesses, and conflating phobias with bigoted beliefs and behaviors invites further stigma and relies on ableist language. Okay, so you're telling me anti-fat bias is more to do with like the systemic issues and how people act in a very general way, whereas fat phobia is more so of a, I guess, a mental illness. I would, I, I guess I was not aware of that. Like if you were fat phobic, you have a mental illness. I was not aware of that. I don't know if that's exactly what she's saying, but that's what it sounds like. And I guess it's more to do with an individual, which I mean, sure, if that's the way you want to do it, usually people will use those terms interchangeably, fat phobia and anti-fat biases. Usually those things are like interchangeable, but sure, you could separate those things. And by the way, I don't think you're cool for doing that. I just think you're weird, okay? Okay, so let's, let's, let's go through that really quickly, okay? Systemic issues, how? Like, can we, I would love to talk to these people about the systemic issues because they're never clear and they're extremely vague on how they define things like systemic issues that affect fat people negatively. It could be something as simple as stairs. That's most definitely negatively affecting fat people. You think fat people can walk upstairs? Fuck you, they can. They can most definitely not walk upstairs. Or it could be something like bathrooms are too small for me. The stalls themselves, the bathroom seat, the, the toilet bowl capacity for the amount of ass bust that I need to do in this bowl is not sufficient for the amount of busting that I'm going to be doing. That could be fat phobia too. So I'm, I'm always unsure about it. It could also be something like, hey, I was not hired for a job. And then you go... Oh, that's really crazy. Why do you think that? Oh, it was fat phobia. It was anti-fat bias. Oh, wow. That's really crazy that they would negate you from the job market because you're fat. And then you go, what job was that, by the way? What job did you, like, sign up for to try to get a job? I was, like, trying to be a cashier. I was trying to, like, stand up for, like, eight, you know, six to eight hours a day and very limited breaks. Or it could be something like I was the guy on the sidelines that runs next to the marathon runners that's supposed to videotape them. I don't know why they didn't. I don't know why they didn't hire me for that position. Anyway, I'm just going to body slam these five Hot Pockets and eat this entire fruit roll-up box by myself um, to, like, really just stem the depression of not being able to be hired by a systemic, a systemic institution. Like, these people have a very weird way of defining systemic problems and I'm not even one of these people that defines things like systemic issues as things that don't exist I do believe they exist sure but it's very difficult for me to resonate with the way you define things especially with the way that you have these languages set up it doesn't make sense you have absolutely crazy nuances when it comes to these words and terminologies and I feel like this is one of the reasons why so many of you people that watch these videos have absolutely no idea what the fuck you're talking about you understand it'd be like somebody going on the tv like going on tv and going Oh my God, these people, that these people are so, like, they're white supremacists. These people are white supremacists, right? And you go, what? Oh my God, they're white supremacists? And you go, what, well, like, what do they do? Are they, like, hanging black people? Are they, like, running through the streets and, you know, putting up the, the swastika and doing the Hitler salute? And then you go, no, they just had a sign that said being white is okay. And you go, but I think it's okay. But I, but I do think it's okay to be white. Wait, hold on. Does that mean I'm racist? Wait, this doesn't make any sense. That's what you're doing. Every time you talk like this, you're, people have a very, a very uh, a good idea of what racism is in the same sense of somebody saying, this is what fat phobia is, right? And then you go off on these very weird ideas of how fat phobia affects society and how it affects you. And like, people look at that and go, what the fuck are you talking about? You're complaining about not buying two seats on a plane, even though you're literally taking up two seats capacity and you're getting free tickets? Like, people are looking at that and they go, yeah, this is ridiculous. You guys are fucking so, so far out of the realm of how we use our language. You need new words. And then throughout the rest of the book, she uses the terms anti-fatness and anti-fat bias in place of fat phobia. So there you have it. People who hate fat people are not scared. They are. Yeah, I don't like it when people say that. Any like, when somebody goes, oh, man, David, you're homophobic, right? And I would go, uh, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not afraid of gay people. Who's who's scared of gay people? Nobody uses it like that. Like, no, everybody knows the way you're talking about it. And again, it's always like that. I hate it when people do that. I'm not saying she's doing that, but I just have to touch on that. Stop doing that. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Stop making it seem like they're making a claim they're not making to try to justify your point. That's bullshit. Don't do that. Attack the point. Don't attack the language. Bigoted. Like I said, those are not my original thoughts. So go buy the book. True.
and they know that they will get substandard care because of that judgment. Right. I've written about this. That I, I, would... I really hate the idea that people that are fat cannot go to the doctors because they're afraid that if they go to the doctors, the doctor's going to tell them that there's an issue with them being fat. The entire point of going to the doctors is to address problems that you have and things that you do not know you have. So you can go easily go to the doctor for an issue. And then that issue turns out to be like five other issues that we can tackle, but you're just not like you didn't know about those things, right? Because a lot of people just from for some reason, especially here in the fat community, they think they go, I know my body. Like I know what my body needs. I trust my body. And then you go, but you had cancer like for like months and you didn't even know about it. And you go, they go, oh yeah. Like it never, it doesn't make any sense, right? Like, what do you mean you know your fucking body? You don't know your body in that like spectrum of that, like that particular direction. What the fuck are you talking about? I hate when they make that fucking point. But when it comes to this particular point of like, I don't want to go to the doctor because I'm afraid the doctor is going to tell me that I'm fat. Yeah, I know. That's like the entire point. Like that's, that is what the guy is supposed to do. Like if you go to a doctor and the guy doesn't tell you that you're fat and you're 450, that's a bad doctor. That may not even be a doctor. Where'd you go? Did you just like walk down the street and saw a homeless guy taking a shit while he's smoking crack? And you thought this is a doctor and he didn't tell you about you being fat. He just asked you for $5 so he could buy crack. Then, then okay. Then that's an error. Sure. But like most scenarios, dude. Yeah. A doctor is supposed to tell you what the issues are with your body. And I'm sorry that being fat is a fucking issue. Anyway, go know off. That queen. They will get substandard care because of and what is, I hate when people do this. Like I hate when people have videos and they're just like at the very bottom of the screen and they just come up at the very bottom of the screen, just doing bullshit. By the way, I hate when they do that shit. Just come out of nowhere. Like it, it's, it's, you know, they just fade in. They just come in like, What is that? Why are you doing that? Just repost the content. I'm sick of seeing people's reactions, but they're not doing anything. They're just sitting there pointing at the video. Like, what is that, dude? This is one of the reasons why I hate TikTok so heavily, but I also love it because it's cringy as shit. That judgment. Right. I've written about this that I went for years without seeing a doctor. That's not a flex. That's not a flex, dude. Talk about some, I didn't go to the doctors for years because I was afraid that the doctor would tell me I'm fat. Oh man, dude, do you still advocate for that? But yeah. I just knew that it was just going to be another fucking weight loss lecture because I went in for an ear infection at one point and my aftercare instructions were to lose weight. My five essentials to living my best life as a fat bitch. Number one, learning that a lot of people are going to have a lot to say about your body, whether you like it or not. I've learned over the years as being a plus size person that a lot of people like to put their opinion out there on why they think that you should lose weight or why you're not worthy because you're fat. You should lose weight to get healthier, especially if you have friends, family, and people that rely on you, dude. For some reason, these people think that it's all about them, and to a certain degree it is, but it should be about you in the spectrum of, okay, I'm going to make myself healthier. I'm going to take care of myself uh, as though I was taking care of somebody else, so that way I can benefit other people around me. So that way I am not – it's like it, it takes a real – Big person, not like that, not a fat person, like a big person, morally speaking, to actually do something for themselves, physically speaking, that's going to be beneficial for them health-wise in order to help other people. Like, sure, it's going to help you, but also understand that the process of helping yourself is also going to help other people around you because now you're going to be stronger. You're going to be more durable. You're going to be going to the doctors less and less, right? And too many people neglect themselves and they think, it's my life. It's my life. Like, I'm going to, you know, why does it matter? And you go, but you have three kids and you have a whole husband, and you have a mother and a father that are relying on you to take care of them because they're 78, and you go, it's my life. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. And you go, that's all right. You could do whatever you want, but like, you're not virtuous. You're not. There's no morally goodness in, not, in neglecting your health because you feel like this is just the way you should live. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I, I get it. Like, do whatever you want. Go ahead. But don't act like this is some kind of like virtuous way of living your life because you just don't give a fuck about yourself. That's not cool, okay? Anyway. As soon as I accepted that, I don't really care what people have to think about true, me. True, true. Don't care about what people think about you, dude. Including your mom, your dad, your fucking wife, your husband. None of these people matter to you. Why does it? Fuck them. It's not about what they think. It's about what you think, dude. You know, if they're telling you like, oh, you know, Colleen, you're kind of getting a little bit big. And, you know, you have a hard time breathing regularly. And I think it might be a good idea to lose some weight. And you go, fuck you, mom. That's gross. The fact that you're fat phobic, mom, that's gross. Your mom's just trying to help. Me, Because I'm happy the way that I am, whether if I want to lose weight or don't. That's fine. You could be happy in any direction, but that doesn't mean it's a good thing. You understand? Like, you could be happy while smoking crack. Is, does that mean it's a good thing? No. Obviously fucking not. 
Number two, learning how to dress for my fat body type. I just love this. I love this one too, because you do understand that. Okay. I, you know what? I actually really love the fact that she said my fat body type, because there is a very wide range of diverse diverse people that are fat it's not always going to be the same so like one fat person that's 500 pounds is not going to be shaped the same as another fat person at 500 pounds and that's obvious right so you are going to have to cater to things differently and i hate when these people complain that they can't find clothes when it's pretty obvious that your body is like shaped in a very weird direction half your body weight is on your back first of all what how do you even happen but anyway it doesn't matter the point i'm making is you don't have to be fat like dressing to be a fat person is like dressing with no legs, but you, you have legs, you understand? Like you're just taking your legs and you're just like folding them underneath your, your, your regular legs and going, I'm just a legless person. No, you're not. No, you're not. Nope. And it'd be like the equivalent of just regrowing legs. You know, like you, if you had the option to, I bet if you asked any person that had no legs at all and you asked them, would you grow back legs? If you could, they would go, yes. I would. Of course, you'd meet a couple weird people or maybe they had like a, I don't know, a very niche cir circumstance where they didn't need legs or something like that. I'm sure, there'd be people, those people exist. But generally speaking, most people would be okay with regrowing legs in the same way that you would be okay with losing weight, but you're just caught in your ways. It's literally like the equivalent of somebody that doesn't have legs that has the ability to grow back legs and it'd be like no problem for them anyway, right? It'd be like, it's something as simple as like taking a year and then the legs would just like kind of grow back like Deadpool's legs did from that one movie, Deadpool. And instead, you're just not doing that because you just think that it's you're just content being in the fat body, which is sad, really sad, because you don't have to dress for a fat person. You can dress like a normal person. I know that there's a diagram out there that shows if like you're an apple, you're pear shaped. Crazy. I'm a weird shape. That's crazy as fuck, dude. You can't even identify with a fruit. Damn, dude. I'm going to keep it a buck. Dude. If somebody was like, ah, you know, David, you, you, you know, if I was looking at your body, you kind of look like an apple. I'd be like, dude, what the fuck you just say to me? That's disrespectful as shit. You just call me a fucking apple body? That's not cool, bro. Don't don't ever comment on my body and say that I'm a fruit. Uh, well, actually, let me think about a cool fruit. I don't know. If I well, I think I wouldn't be offended if it was like a cooler fruit. If somebody was like, you have a shape like a dragon fruit, I feel like that'd be pretty cool. But then again, dragon fruits are kind of like weirdly shaped. They have those like weird things that come off the side, like the scales or whatever. Maybe that'd be a little bit weird. What fruit am I? Let me know down below. What fruit am I? But I have learned... Oh, she can't even identify with the fruit, by the way. She's got a weird shape, whatever that is. On how to properly dress so that it accentuates my waist. It make... Accentuates what waist? It's a waste of fucking space. All that shit in your fucking closet right now from all the clothes that you're buying that are taking up double or triple the amount of space that it would have if you just lost some weight. And that's what it's coming down to. My hips look bigger and my waist looks smaller. You know what's interesting? Oh. You know what's interesting? Is that this person's trying to emphasize these key characteristics that most women want to emphasize which is fine in the same way that guys are emphasizing broad shoulders big broad shoulders and small small hips and big bus big big muscular biceps and things such and so forth big lat muscles right that's okay but it's interesting that you're doing it within the realm of being obese when you don't have to be obese why are you mid maxing why are you trying to max out this physique of being fat when you just don't have to be fat? And guess what would happen? Your waistline would decrease. Your, your thigh gap would increase. You would have a whole bunch more properties that you're associating as attractive. Instead, you're literally talking about some, I'm dressing to decrease my, my gut size. Just decrease the gut size. What are you talking about? Learning to wear specific types of clothing so that my curves look great instead of it just hanging out of the backside. Crazy as fuck, dude. Just lose weight and you won't have these things. Why are you, what are you doing? That's like somebody going like, oh, I can't, I, every time I get into a car and I try to put the seatbelt on, I can't, there's not enough, there's not enough slack. And so what I have to do is I have to go on Amazon and buy a $20 extra seatbelt extender so that way I can fit in my car because I'm so fat. Instead of just losing weight that would require you to spend less money on getting into the car and you would have just used the natural length of the seatbelt. Like that's what you're doing. Why are you go? Why are you trying to work within these boundaries? You don't have to work within. It's not. It's, why are you doing that? Has made my confidence ten times better than the what fuck it used. Is dumb. This is stupid, though. This is absolutely hysterically stupid. To be in the past. Number three, learning to accept that my weight fluctuates a lot. Why don't you fluctuate it down? Why don't you just lose some weight downward and then you would? <laughs> I stopped beating myself up. That sounds crazy as fuck. I'm not going to lie, dude. If we just ended it right there, I'd stop beating myself up. No nut November. If I went up five pounds, if I lost 10 pounds, vice versa, if I gained 50, I lost damn, 100. Damn, what the it fuck? Gained 50? God damn. 
<laughs> what the fuck was happening? Wait, was that a week? You gained 50 in what, a month? A week? And what, what's that time frame? No matter what I gained and lost. I think, it, I think it fucking matters, dude. If you're gaining 50 pounds in what, a month, a week? Those are red flags, dude. You gotta be looking at that scale like, is there something wrong with this scale? How the fuck I gained 50 pounds? It's only been two weeks. Damn. That's a red flag, dude. You should be looking at that. That's not something you just go, it's fine. 50 pounds, not that bad at all. Because I let that weight on the scale affect my mental health. To you should. If you're fucking gaining 50 pounds and you're looking at it as anything other than not a problem, that's an issue. That's a big problem. That's a fucking big problem. You gaining 50 pounds and you're looking at that as like, oh, it's making me depressed. So what's the solution? Just never scaling yourself ever again because you're afraid of the number on the scale? Why? What is good with you? Just it's like these problems can all be alleviated if you just decided to do something about your health instead of complaining about the scale. What are you talking? It's not the scale. That's the problem. To a point where... If I gained like 0.5 overnight, I lost my marbles. So I learned to step off the scale and let my body do the talking. Step off the scale, step into the kitchen. You know what I'm talking about, dude? Number four, I will never let my weight determine what I can and cannot do. Well, that's interesting because that's not how that works. That's fine that you're going to say that if you're doing normal human being stuff like walking to the grocery store. I guess that's maybe off limits. If you didn't have a car, what would happen? Like, are you going to still let it affect you or not let you affect you? What do you – how does this even make sense? You're not going to let your weight affect things that you can and cannot do? What if there are things that you physically cannot do because of your weight? Do you just look at that as something that's like – do you just – how do you what do you, how do you do there? What do you do there? Just like is that not an option for you? Do you just like do – you, do you break the rules of our universe and still do those things? Okay, well, hey, bro. I mean, sheesh. That's fine. You're living in a different universe then. How the fuck does that even work? What? That's like me going, I don't let the fact that I don't have a vagina, I don't let that mean that I can't take penis in my vagina. That's like what that's what it basically is. Like even though I'm obviously big meaty, big meaty man, whatever you want to call me, and I lack a vagina, right? The 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 vagina folds or whatever, the uterine lining, the egg sac, I don't have that. But I still take BBCs right in my vagina. Like, how do I do that? I don't know. But I'm not, listen, I'm not letting it hold me back. I'm not, I'm just not. I don't care what you guys say. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? I will never let my weight determine what I can and cannot do. Dumb. If I want to do something, yeah. I'm going to go do it. That's great. That's so great. Um, But what if you sink? Like, what if you're like, I'm going to go swim. And you go, because I can do everything in a fat body compared to what thin people can do. And then you get on then you get on the boat and the boat just starts sinking a little bit. It's like, oh shit, damn, what the fuck? Or you get in a taxi and the taxi starts leaning over on one side and the guy looks mine like, yo, uh, you put something in the trunk? Like, uh, yo, who, who's actually, <gasps> oh my God, who are you? Like, you gotta get out of my car. I don't have enough money for, to fix this suspension. Sure, I'm sure you can live like this, but it's a fairy tale land. This doesn't even make sense. This point literally, quite literally, doesn't make sense. It, it, you're, you're literally talking about how you're you're going to transcend reality and still do things even though it's not physically possible for you. Can and cannot do. If I want to do something, I'm going to go do it. I don't want to go on an airplane because I'm scared I'm not going to fit in the seat. Crazy. I still did it. Crazy. I'm scared to go paddle boarding because what if I can't stand up? And, and, what if the, the fucking boat sinks? What if... What, what, what if Man, dude, this person is on some different shit, dude. I mean, I get it in these scenarios, like you're still going to do it. But what you're failing to understand here is, right, when you talk about things like this and you go, I, I was scared to get on a plane, but I still did it. Fuck yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a go get it type of girl. Fat girlies do work or whatever, right? Um, you know that your life would be like you would be able to do a lot of that stuff without being fat, right? You know that you could probably achieve more if you were thinner because you wouldn't let the boundaries of you being fat affect how you get things done. You understand that, right? Like the fact that you're sitting here and going, even though I know being fat is like prohibiting me from doing stuff, I'm still going to do that stuff. You know that you don't have to, right? You know that it's like you don't have to, you don't have to be fat. You know that you can just not be fat and then have, you could just do stuff, right? You know that. You know that? Okay. Well, you can. So anyway. Okay. I, all right. It. I'm scared to go paddle boarding because what if I can't stand up? Go on your knees or just enjoy it. That's okay, bro okay okay just go on your knees i guess okay learn to live your life stop being so scared that if you're a bigger person you can't enjoy life you can 
it's, but you don't man it's like it's such it's a great idea it's a great talking point you can live your life while fat but it's ignoring that you don't have to be fat like it just i don't understand that's like a guy going i'll never be able to run the marathon i'll never be able to do anything in life that has to do with walking and doing anything like that and you go hey bro um but there's like that procedure that you can get done like tomorrow and your legs will grow back and you can have that it's free yeah it's free um it actually wouldn't cost you any it would actually um we would pay you yeah because you would you would keep more of your money basically and you could just do it tomorrow it would take a few weeks to months probably to g grow back those legs, but you'll grow them back. And then you can walk, you can run, you can do all the stuff that you would have ordinarily not been able to do that you can do now. And you go, but I'm just going to, no, I'm not. I'm just going to live my life the way that it is right now. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk with no legs. And you go, okay, sure, bro. All right. That's what you're basically saying. Like, I, why are you, why do you, why do you have to say this shit like that? Like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Just lose weight. It's your own mindset that is stopping you from doing so. It's also your joints, high blood pressure diabetes um heart disease oh man all that <sighs> but no it's a mindset honestly um sigma male grind set that's what it all that's what it's all about you can't walk fuck you walk get up out of that fucking seat stop being a bitch dude um that doesn't mean anything you don't have legs that doesn't mean bro get up and walk okay be a man okay what are you a woman be a man be a man yes it's okay to be scared because i was at one point too i was scared i can never get back on a surfboard I could never get back on a paddleboard. Because you got too fat? What the fuck are we talking? You you were scared that you would never be able to do the things that you love because you got fat. And you discovered that you could still do that stuff while you're fat. Or do it limitedly. Instead of just losing weight. And then doing the stuff that you love? I can never go snowboarding. I can never do these things. Because I was so scared that I would fail. And you want to know what? It's okay to fail. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Oh my God, it hurts me deeply. It's all right to fail. It's cool to fail. But you're literally talking about things that you can do to not fail, and you would not, you would, it wouldn't be an option for you if you just lost weight instead of failing because you're fat. That doesn't make any sense. Why are you even doing this to yourself? Like, that's like somebody punching themselves in the face, like, oh, but it's okay because I know that I'm powerful. I'm not going to let this hold me back. Just stop punching yourself. No. You get back up and you try again. Sure. Number five. Uh, you, your fucking knees about to be hurting though, 100%. And this one's very important. Yeah. It's okay to be upset at yourself for sometimes feeling the way that you do. What the fuck does that even mean? Sometimes I get upset that, well, if I only looked like this specific plus size girl, I could live my life so much easier. If you looked like a person in a thinner body, you would live your life, your life a lot more thoroughly or... You would have more accessibility options, dude. All right. I don't even know why we're talking about it in the, the, the genre of fat acceptance here, but whatever. Or if I look like this person, it would be so much better. True. So I stopped comparing myself yeah, to other people. It's, that's gross. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't compare yourself to other people. You should be comparing yourself to yourself every single day. That's a fact. You should also be looking at what your body can do for itself. Like if you know that you're overweight or obese and you can lose weight, you should do that. Because why the fuck wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to live a life that doesn't require you to have joint pains and all this other stuff? I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I do it sometimes and I get upset about it. But you get I upset with yourself for acknowledging the truth? I don't let it make my day or my week or month crappy. Say, okay. okay, what can I do in my life to improve it? Lose weight, eat less, work out, become active, go to the doctor. <laughs> That maybe if that's my goal weight or if I want to look like her, what can I change in my lifestyle to look like her? You just lose it's just calories in, calories out. You know, walk a little bit more, guys. But I stopped comparing myself. Okay. I let myself be sad <laughs> in the moment. Okay. And then I see what I can change. Change doesn't happen overnight. My weight's not going to change in a day. Okay. It's going to take months. True. So if my issue is about my weight, it's going to take months to improve. And you make a Okay, what does that even mean, though? It's going to take months to improve. So what? Like, what does that mean? Like, why does that matter? Yes, it's going to take months to improve. Is that not a reason to change right now, though? She was about my weight. Whatever, dude. This woman was it's on gonna some It's going to take months shit. to improve. Th this woman actually has me fucking rolling my eyes back. Dude, I don't even know what the fuck this woman's even talking about, dude. If you don't want to be fat, you don't have to be fat. That's just really what it comes down to. And I believe in you. If you want to lose weight, I think you got it. I think you can do it. And you make a game. Okay, I saw this comment, Jason. If your blood work is 100%, and you've got your liver and kidneys are good, then you're great. If you you are great, you are beautiful. But 
if your liver enzymes are higher or pre-diabetic and, and obese, you have to lose your weight for your health. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, yeah. Days ago, and I've been still thinking about it and how to put it into words. And I think the best way to talk uh. about this is by giving my personal experience. So her comment says, if your blood work is 100% and your liver and kidneys are good, then great, you are beautiful. I just, I just gotta point out really quickly, most of the time when people say, I'm just gonna pull out my personal like, oh, this is what I believe, or this is what's happened to me. Most of the time, like, anecdotal evidence is not really a determining factor. That'd be like somebody going like, oh, you know, um, black people are arrested at a far higher great rate compared to these particular people or whatever. And then a black guy comes out and goes, um, you know, I don't know about that, dog, because, like, I was black and I didn't get arrested one time. And you go... Oh, yeah, that's cool, bro. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't change anything, though, right? Because, like, just because you had your one anecdotal evidence doesn't mean that doesn't change. That doesn't mean it changes the whole entire idea of what we're talking about. Anyway. But if your liver enzymes are high or pre-diabetic and obese, you have to lose weight for your health. Now, are you a superhero? this is coming from someone who previously never had any health issues, right? Like, I never dealt with anything and i've been fat since i was a little kid okay. and i remember going to the doctor's office and one of a relative of mine because we would always go together a relative of mine would get blood work drawn at the same time with me because we were all the same age and they were skinnier huh. and they're both i can already see where this is going dude i was fat i didn't have a problem they were thin and they had a problem therefore i'm all right most of the problems you're going to have in life are going to come out abruptly. They're going to happen randomly at random times, random intervals in your life. And that is not cool because you can alleviate a lot of those problems that you're going to have by losing weight or by doing things that are going to help you lose weight or make you more active or things like that. Being proactive about it. If you're sitting here trying to tell me, like, I've never really had problems. Like, I've never been a person that went to the doctor. I never had high blood pressure. I never had this. I never had that. But I know a lot of thin people that had these issues. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Who are you? Are you a superhero? Why do you think this applies to you, but it doesn't apply to everybody else? Like, why do you think you're so special? That doesn't make any sense. Who are you? Blood work came out a little bit of normal, you know problems with uh cholesterol other things things that you would normally think a fat person would happen because sure. i was fat my blood work would come out pretty good wow. healthy um uh, the numbers were you know good and yeah. the doctor wouldn't believe it the doctor would be like oh they must have mixed up the blood work because yeah, I, I doubt that i fucking doubt that if a doctor's going like all right let's hear a look at your blood work oh, this, uh, this ain't you no this this most definitely ain't you what's your name again Oh, oh, Jessica. Oh, this is you. Oh, are you sure? Are you sure this is your blood work? Oh, no. Oh, you're kind of a little bit suspect. Oh, no. Nobody's doing that. Nope. I don't think a doctor's sitting there going like, ha, no, nah, this ain't you. That, that's not, that's not happening. The fat girl is coming up healthy and the skinny girl is not. And I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, they would run it again and run it again. And How many times they run it? Huh, is that the only thing that's running in your life? The time whenever I would go with this, like, skinny relative. And <laughs> it really, I think it's one of the reasons why I lost so much autonomy of my own body is because we're constantly being told no matter what that because you live in a fat body, you are inherently sick and you are inherently a bad person or you are unhealthy you know not Say healthy and you don't deserve love and respect because you know what saying now we're talking about health right now why do you why are you even bringing up love and like what the fuck does that have to do with anything just talk about the unhealthy part yes if you are obese if you're obese you are unhealthy you're 100 unhealthy I, don't, I mean i don't care about fucking love right now i don't why does that even matter i don't care that you had a, a relative that was thin and they had high cholesterol that's awful for them, but I don't know what that has to do with you being fat and not having issues. I, okay, hey, um, I'm glad. I'm glad your blood pressure and all this other stuff is great. I don't care. Um, you thinking that means doesn't lose, like, oh, I, oh, my blood pressure, everything's great. Uh, I don't need to lose weight. I'm good. Nah, that's not how that works. You're still fat. You're still, that's still an issue. What does that, what does that have to do with being in love? What is this? What are you talking about? You have to bring up something that's bullshit to try to make it seem like your point is valid. Then it's probably not a good point. Stop. Okay. Yes, it went. Okay. Because what you are saying by saying that this person, yeah, fine. If your enzymes and your kidneys are fine, you're you're beautiful. Like to me, it's just. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that, dude. Uh, I would still say, 
that's still a problem. You're, you're obese. I don't give a fuck about your blood work. I mean, granted, your blood work is good. That's great. That just means that the fat hasn't affected you totally. Um, you can still, you still have time. That's great. Awesome. You still have time to lose weight, cut your losses, make sure you mitigate those problems. Yes, that's good. But you're just taking it as like, my health is good. Therefore, I don't need to do shit, bitch. That's what I'm hearing from you. If your enzymes and your kidneys are fine, you're, you're beautiful. Like, to me, it's just... What about the people who are not healthy? Do they not deserve respect and care? Nobody said that. Nobody said that. We're saying that if you – what that person is saying is that if you have good blood work and your enzymes or whatever are fucking good, then you're probably fine. Like you, you don't need to do much, right? But for the people that do have those issues, they're going to have to do something about it. That's just that's what they're saying. Nobody's saying anything about – like I think you're misreading the word beautiful. I think they mean beautiful in the sense of like – you're good. You're cool. You're you're chilling. You're big chilling. No, but not like the actual definition of beautiful in the sense of like you look good. I think you're, I think you're getting it mixed up. I don't know how, you know, we all, sometimes we have weird ways of describing things, right? I know that sometimes I say weird words that maybe are not appropriate in certain scenarios and you have to like really ask questions to understand where that word comes from or like what, what that, what you mean by that word. But in this particular scenario, dude, we're talking about health. Like I don't even, okay, whatever, dude, go on. And I know that you're thinking that it's just something that you can do, go and eat healthy and work out and do yeah. this. But for a lot of people, including myself, I live in the South Bronx. Okay. I lived in the South Bronx. I lived in a better neighborhood in the Bronx, and I'm still in a food desert. Like, Okay, I'm sick of this argument of food deserts, dude. It's South Bronx. You live in a big city, and you have you have you don't have access to food, but you're, you're fat? What the fuck are you talking about? You're going to sit there and try to tell me that you don't Uber Eats every single night? Dude, if you're sitting here blaming your problems on a food desert, you're fat, okay? I don't, what do you, like, I refuse, I hate this argument of food deserts because it's like it spits on the face of so many people that know how to cook and other things like that. It, I don't care. Like, I, I, I don't care. I don't think these food deserts really exist from the research that I've done. Um, even in people in very, very rural neighbor, neighborhoods and areas still have the ability to go get food and eat well. I don't think that just because you're in a place that doesn't have access to like where where first of all you don't have a grocery store around you is that what you're saying? There's no place around you that you can go and get groceries or find food of good quality. You have to order Uber Eats. You have to do this. You have to go out and get Mickey D's all the time. That's bullshit. If anything, I live in a food desert too because I live in a giant metropolitan area. I live in a huge metropolitan area. And I have to travel a far distance to get to grocery stores because there's none really near me. I have to go on maybe 30, 40 minute walks sometimes um, to get to the grocery stores and things like that. But guess what? I still do it because I'm not going to spend all this money on Uber Eats and all this other stuff because it's not it's not beneficial for me. It's not beneficial for most people. It's cheaper to eat at grocery stores and guess. Guess what? Um, ordering Uber Eats is very expensive. So I and no, and also this is just a way to excuse your bad behavior when people say this shit, especially in this scenario. Um, you're using all these like weird outside precautions to try to justify you being fat. Oh, my blood pressure is good. Oh, I live in a food desert, so I have to eat like this. Like, why Why is it always not you? Like, you can't do anything to actually help yourself? It's always something outside your the realm of possibilities? Bronx. I lived in the South Bronx. I lived in a better neighborhood in the Bronx, and I'm still in a food desert. Like, the options that we have are not the same that everyone else has. Like, everybody's working in a different area, right? Everybody, obviously. And a lot of somebody's, a lot of somebody's, Everything is determined by luck. I agree with this. But in this particular scenario, she's just wrong. This is more than just like a fat thing. It is. Um, it's a political, do social, that. economic issue. Don't do that. There's a lot of people who cannot afford to do the things that you can't afford to do. What are you talking about? Eating well is not something that you can't afford to do. We're talking about literally creating. How much are you spending? How much are you spending on food? Can, let me, let me, let's run the numbers real quick. Okay. Let's run the numbers. So you're obese. This woman's obese, all right? Let's run the numbers real quick. How much you spending? I would love to know how much she's spending every month. Let's look through your bank statements real quick. Let's see what you're spending every single month on food, and let's compare it to how much I spend a month on food, and we'll compare and contrast, right? Look at me, right? How much do I weigh? 150. 150. 150. 150. I have legs. Look, see? Legs, right? And I weigh 150 pounds. I work out. I go and I get food from grocery stores. I don't eat out. How much do you think I spend in comparison to how much you spend on food? Do you think it's more? Do you think I spend more money than you? That would be an interesting guess. That would be a very weird guess, though. That is bullshit. 
stop trying to make it seem like eating well is outside the boundaries for you when I know you're probably spending way more money than normal people when it comes to food, given the fact that you're obese. You're not special. You can't tell me that you're, you're, you're only fat because like social economic issues. I'm thin. You, you spend more money than me. That doesn't make any sense. Because you may be in a better neighborhood not, and we have more money than the other person does. Uh, dude, stop talking about money, okay? I don't. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Why are you bringing up money? What does money have to do with anything? You are obese. But that doesn't mean that the other person doesn't deserve respect, love, Who said that? good care. Who said that? Who said that? Who, who, who are you fighting right now? You fighting like Patrick Swayze's ghost? Good food options. And that's one of the things that always gets me mad. It's always somebody else's fault. And I hate when people can't take accountability for themselves. This person, I would fucking destroy this person if we were actually having a conversation. None of these points make any sense. You're just taking the responsibility off yourself and you're throwing it on government institutions. What do you, what do you, what do you even want? How, how can you say these things, dude? If you're obese, it's your fault. When people talk about like, well, work out and eat better. Like, do you know where they live? Do you know how much money they make? Do you know how they can do that? Like, yeah, you go outside and walk. Um, uh, eat less. Do I know how much money you make? Eat less, huh? Interesting. Interesting statement. You you know there are some really so when you go in the grocery store, right? The upfront cost that you're probably spending on food is probably going to be more money than it is going to be for eating out. Like, I don't know how much you spend eating out. 10, 15 bucks probably. You know you're getting that Big Mac fries inside, right? That's what it is. You're probably spending 13 to $15 on that meal. If I go to the grocery store and I spend 150 bucks and you eat that one meal, you can only do that a few times before you hit that 150 the mark that I did. But guess what? That $150 that I just spent at the grocery store is gonna last me weeks. It's gonna last me weeks. I have food for multiple meals, I got tons and tons of ingredients. I can put stuff together. That's what it comes down to. It's the longevity of the food compared to what you're doing, which is a one and done solution. How many times do you eat in a day? At least three, right? At least three. I know people on that intermittent fasting, but even if you did intermittent fasting, that means you have to you have to be maximizing the food in that one meal. So you're probably eating three meals in that one meal, right? So even if you were doing on that, let's just say three meals a day. How much money are you spending on those three meals if you're Uber, if you're ordering Uber Eats? I'm sick of people hitting sit, sitting there going, I don't have time to cook. I don't have time to cook. I live in a food desert. It's not possible for me to go out and make food or get the ingredients put together. And like, it's very far from me. I don't care what you're saying, dude. You have to. It is what it is. All right. You live in a bad environment. I get it. Okay. The cost of living has gone up. I get it. Okay. We're all working with it. All right, dude. I'm poor just like you, but that's not an excuse to take a responsibility off yourself to try to justify your fat existence when you know the real reason is you're eating too many calories. That's what it comes down to. Our governments are not literally. And I wanted to sit here too. She's smiling. Like she's she knows what she's saying here is ridiculous. Like she's got a. You know what I'm saying? Look, hey, bro. <laughs> you know you got enough money to spend on his lip gloss and nice hair, beautiful hair. I don't know what this is. Some kind of sherbet ice cream shirt. Not, it's got some good stuff back here. I don't know some fashion industry stuff. How you got all that money to spend on this? But you don't got no money to spend on good food. I don't know, man. I don't know. Money to make. Do you know how they can do that? Like. Our governments are not literally taking care of us. Like, Why would the government take care of you? Oh, mm, my God. Okay, here's the thing, right? I'm not even one of these people that sits, sits there and says, I don't think government programs should exist. Totally fine with government pro pro programs existing. I would love every time I pay my taxes, though, I get a receipt so I can see what my, my taxes are going for. Because oftentimes, the things that I think my taxes are going for don't actually do anything. But I'm okay with government programs, dude. I think these, sh these things should exist. I think the government should have a monopoly on stuff like that. I do, right? But I also believe that people should be able to do things themselves. And if your solution to things is the reason why I can't lose weight is because the government isn't bailing me out, why, what, what are you talking about? Why is it that easy for you to dismiss things that you can change for yourself, that you can change for yourself right now with something as big as the government bad, the government not do good for me? What the fuck? Who are you? Who are you, dude? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the government's fault. It's all the government's fault. Fucking Joe Biden, dude. Fuck, man. What's wrong with you, dude? The foods that we eat are not healthy, creating a lot hey, of- Why do you think the government's responsible, man? What the fuck, dude? With the foods we're eating are bad. You don't have to eat those foods. You know you can eat other foods, right? All right, man, whatever. Issues. Uh, a lot of the places that we live in don't have um, access to fresh she's clean. So, she's so happy. 
she's so happy saying this shit because she thinks she's slaying right now. She thinks she's eating. She did. She thought she ate with this one, dude. You ain't eat. You ain't eat. See, you you ain't eat, sis. This is this is all bad. This is just bad. All bad, dude. You're you're literally seeding all your responsibility on Joe Biden and you're smiling through it because you think that you made some points. You made no points. Uh, a lot of the places that we live in don't have um, access to fresh, clean water um, <laughs> and vital things for survival and like... Vital things for survival? You're obese. Getting uh, foods that are not over-processed, like all of these things. You're not fat because you're eating over-processed foods. You're, you're fat because you're eating too many calories. That I have been managed to do in my life right now. I'm like able to buy organic food. You don't need to buy organic, man. I'm gonna keep it a buck to you, okay, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a solid buck with you, all right? Okay? Cage-free eggs doesn't mean shit. I'm sick of people thinking that cage-free means anything. There's still the, the chickens that you're talking about. They're still living terrible, disgusting lives. They're in big, giant fucking warehouses compared to the cages. You feel better now? You shouldn't. Organic what? Organic what? Hmm? You like buying one-inch bananas? I'm buying the BBC bananas. The big ones. The big, thick ones that you could swallow down your mouth and you're choking on that shit. Ugh, 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 ugh. That's what I'm eating. Guess what? In my mouth. All day in my, in my mouth. The people that really obsess over food like this, how much are you spending on organic food? Like an extra double, sometimes triple the value of the, the other foods? I don't care, dude, okay? If you're if you're broke on money, I'm not bougie, dude. I'm buying white bread. I'm buying white bread that's one dollar. It's not a dollar anymore, it's a dollar fifty. And I'm not buying, nope, not buying the bread, the brown bread. I'll do it every once in a while, every once in a while, but I'm buying regular, I'm not bougie. I'm not buying bougie bread. I'm buying BBC bananas. I'm buying ginormous fucking nut sacks of apples, big nut sacks, big camel nut sack apples. I'm buying all that shit. Big chicken breast, big chicken breast, big chicken breast. And I'm buying the the beef. I'm buying all that shit. Guess what? It's not it's not as cheap, sure. Like it's, it's sometimes I eat I get something that's a little bit exotic, but dude, it, it, what you're talking about right now is like, "Oh, I can't eat organic food. That's why I'm fat." What are you dumb? What are you fucking dumb? That's not that's not the reason why you're fat. You can eat tons of of overprocessed foods and still lose weight. You're just not trying. And buy cage eggs and get vegetables that are fresh. You don't need vegetables that are fresh. All my vegetables I eat out of can. You don't need to have them fresh. What are you talking about? Most people like eat vegetables. Okay, hear me, hear me out, okay? Hear me out. If you're going to the grocery store, aren't you buying frozen vegetables? You're going to the frozen food section, you're buying frozen vegetables. Or you're buying canned vegetables. And you think you're, like, you think you're bad for that? There's like almost no difference. Okay, whatever, dude. Whatever, man. Um, because I'm older and I make money and I don't have kids and I can afford to do that because I don't have to feed four or five kids. These people have absolutely no real world experience, dude. I'm just smelling it. Like I could just smell the aroma of no responsibility, never taking anything serious, have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. This doesn't make any sense because you don't have five kids. What the fuck are you even talking about, man? Um, and I can take care of myself and those around me, but it's just so cruel to think and to categorize someone as yeah they deserve they they deserve to be seen as pretty and beautiful and worthy of a human being because they are not fat it, I, I don't know i <laughs> i don't even know what you're getting that from like you're just you just made that point up from nowhere because you want to have a point to grasp onto nobody said that why are you saying that why are you saying that huh i've been thinking about this comment for so long and this is something that i have been struggling uh, internally because I'm trying to figure out how do I take responsibility for yourself? How do you do that? By doing it. I, I Stop looking at daddy government. Stop looking at all these places. Like, it's okay if you need government assistance. I'm not one of these people that shits on you if you need government assistance. If you need it, you need it, right? It's there for a reason. Take every crutch you possibly can. Like, if you need help, you need help. Don't feel shame for that. But this person literally seeding all her decisions and all, everything because Joe Biden didn't give her this or systemic issue that uh, grocery stores don't exist. I'm 550 pounds. I order Uber Eats every single fucking month. I can't, I don't buy eggs because they're not cage free eggs. First of all, I don't think anybody gives a fuck if eggs are cage free or not, dude. I'd be like, what are you fucking cheapest ones first? Whatever, dude. Like this person just coming up with excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. If you want to be fat, be fat. Don't come up with these bullshit ass excuses. How do I advocate for myself when I do get sick? When I do. <laughs> 
do not feel well. Like, <laughs> do I not get to say anything because I'm a fat person? What are you do I talking not get to about? Complain about having any other issues with my body? Be you can, but you need to acknowledge that a lot of these issues that you're going to be facing, like you can go to the if you got good health insurance, dude, great. I'm glad that you can have you you can have health services. But it's like a lot of the issues that you're going to have, a lot of the issues that you might be having may be attributed to the fact that you're obese and those things could be alleviated if you just were not obese. And I get it. You're not looking at things, these like oh, losing weight as a solution because you literally think that it's impossible for you to lose weight because government or whatever bullshit you think. It's like, it, I, it's an oral boreal, so I've never taken responsibility. Because I'm fat. Anyways, I want you all to think about that. <laughs> I'm thinking about how much of a victim you are, but you're not actually a victim. You're like the most privileged person I've seen in this video so far, complaining about how, how non-privileged you are. <laughs> Let's continue the conversation because and absolutely this is no real world crazy. experience. This is a child. I guess what I'm trying to say is that sometimes fatness is kind of demonized. Like no there's shit. a moral issue when you are a fat person. No shit. Cause like no other person can lose weight besides you. Like nobody can force you to lose weight. Nobody's going to like give you something for losing weight. You have to do it yourself. It's all up to you. So if you're sitting here complaining about all the problems of being fat and do nothing about it, why are you complaining? Like it's up to you. You decide, you, you decided to be fat. Therefore you can decide not to be fat. And that's what a lot of people think and consider. But what I'm trying to say is that what we need to do is to create a better environment for everyone to that's live terrible. in. Um, you can't change the world, but you can change your world. You can change how you operate within the world. It's too hard. You're never going to see change. If you want the world to change, it's never going to change. Stop relying on everybody else to do stuff for you. Do it yourself. Lose the weight yourself. A lot of us, like I said earlier, we live in food deserts. It's like We don't easy. have access too to easy, a lot man. of natural. If, if the fruit is that low hanging, like if it's sitting there and it's right there in your face, why are you grabbing onto it? Go for the higher hanging fruit. It's too easy, man. Good food. And we have to eat all of these chemical foods and things like that. Bro. So that is also one of the reasons why people are fat. Get the fuck and out of here, Now that it excuses bro. this type of mentality. But your mentality, bro, is fucking flawed as shit that i can't i'm not even gonna reply to any of this shit dude this is fucking gross and the reasons this is actually insane fat. and now that it excuses this type of mentality but i just want to i just want to bring that up to the front of your brain whenever you think of that it, it's not a moral issue fatness and thinness you're crazy it really isn't you're plus crazy. size fashion is in the trenches and i mean that with my whole heart not only are brands reducing their plus size lines like, it's literally impossible to find good plus-size options in the places where you normally shop. They're almost completely getting rid of them. But on top of that, for the brands that are actually still doing plus-size clothes, they have decided to forget every single lesson we have learned over the last 15 years. Tell me why I saw a puffer jacket that I really, really liked. I thought it was so cute. It was so cute from the neck to the waist. From the waist down, there was a skirt. For what? My torso can stay warm, but my cooch gotta feel a breeze? Yeah. Why are cold shoulders back? I'm actually cold. I do get cold. I'm anemic. That's interesting. Oof, wow, that's an interesting problem to have, dude. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. If you're fat and you're complaining about not being, not being able to find clothes, that's an interesting problem to have given the fact that you're fat. I don't know. Like so many times I see fat people complaining about things that I just feel like there should be other things that she should be complaining about and doing something about clothes. I get it. I think fat people should have clothes. I'm not one of these people that sits there and say things that fat people should be naked. That would be gross. I think that you should, you guys should have clothes cover up go ahead, but you can't deny that a lot of the issues that you guys face are because of the problems that you self induce upon yourself. But regardless, whatever, dude, we're going to end the video. My brain is completely destroyed from that last woman. So We'll get the video here. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff, I would appreciate you tremendously. I care for you. I love you. You're a majestic, beautiful person. If you're a member of my channel, I appreciate you tremendously. I care. I love all those things. If you're a subscriber, I, I really appreciate you too as well. If you want to become a member, you can. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below. <sighs> By typing in, I don't know, dude. Let me think of something, dude. A grass. Let's do grass. I, we've done grass a few times, but these people genuinely need to touch some grass. These people need to go outside and actually see how the real world is instead of like complaining, 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 complaining about things that are completely ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, guys, 
you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're spectacular. I wanna tell you that you have really transformed yourself and your body and your amazingness to better suit the world and I love that. I love that you're able to do things for yourself in a way that's organized, in a way that's responsible, in a way that can benefit you and everyone else around you. Super powerful of a decision. You're a beautiful, hot specimen of society. I love looking upon you with my eyes and my tongue because you're such an amazing, beautiful specimen of human being. Anyway guys, we're gonna end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord if you want to join any of those things. And my second channel where I upload stream highlights. You could join any of that stuff by li linking, by checking out the links in the description and the about section of my channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 